This video is about inverse trig functions. This is AP Precalculus Topic 3.9. If you appreciate the content, please give it a like. If you have not yet memorized these nine trig values, pause the video and memorize this chart right now. Number one, to evaluate the arc cosine of one half, you should be thinking the cosine of what is equal to one half. The fact that the cosine of pi over 3 is equal to 1 half tells us that the reference angle is pi over 3. In this case, we want cosine to be positive, and cosine is positive in the first quadrant and in the fourth quadrant because cosine is the x value on the unit circle. So we've narrowed it down to these two solutions. These are the range restrictions for our three inverse trig functions. The range restriction on arc cosine is that it must be between 0 and pi. That's in the first quadrant or the second quadrant. This narrows it down to only the angle in the first quadrant. And the angle in the first quadrant with a reference angle of pi over 3 is pi over 3 itself. I'm showing steps for instructional purposes, but the goal is that you will be able to do all of this in your head. To evaluate the arc cosine of negative radical 2 over 2, you should be thinking the sine of what angle is equal to negative radical 2 over 2. We can determine the reference angle by ignoring the negative sign and asking the sine of what is radical 2 over 2. We have memorized that the sine of pi over 4 is radical 2 over 2. So that is the reference angle. In this case, sine is negative, and sine is negative in the third quadrant and the fourth quadrant because sine is the y value on the unit circle. However, the output values of arc sine are restricted to the first quadrant and the fourth quadrant between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. This narrows it down to the answer in the fourth quadrant. Normally, we would say let's think of pi as 4 pi over 4 and 2 pi as 8 pi over 4. So this angle will be 7 pi over 4. But 7 pi over 4 is wrong for arc sine. The problem is the range restriction on arc sine. Arc sine is not allowed to go bigger than pi over 2. The angle of 7 pi over 4 starts here and goes past pi over 2. That's the mistake and goes all the way around to here. So that is far bigger than pi over 2. Instead, we will arrive at this same terminal side, but we will go clockwise. That way we stay within the range of arc sine. But rotating in this way is negative pi over 4. So that's the correct answer. To evaluate the arc tangent of 1, you should be thinking the tangent of what angle is equal to 1. We have memorized that the tangent of pi over 4 is equal to 1. So pi over 4 is the reference angle. In this case, we want tangent to be positive, And we have learned that tangent is the slope of the terminal side. The terminal side will have a positive slope in these two quadrants, quadrants 1 and quadrants 3. However, the values of arc tangent are restricted to quadrants 1 and 4, between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. This narrows it down to only the first quadrant. And the angle in the first quadrant with a reference angle of pi over 4 is pi over 4 itself. To evaluate the arc cosine of negative radical 3 over 2, you should be thinking the cosine of what is equal to negative radical 3 over 2. Ignoring the negative sign, we can find the reference angle by asking the cosine of what is equal to radical 3 over 2. We have memorized that the cosine of pi over 6 is radical 3 over 2. So that is the reference angle. In this case, we want cosine to be negative, and cosine will be negative in these two quadrants because cosine is the x value on the unit circle. 
we use the range restriction of arc cosine to narrow it down to a single quadrant. Arc cosine can only exist between 0 and pi. That's the first quadrant and the second quadrant. So the answer cannot be in the third quadrant. We can think of pi, looking at the reference angle, as 6 pi over 6. That means the angle in the second quadrant with a reference angle of pi over 6 is pi over 6 less than 6 pi over 6. That is 5 pi over 6. To evaluate the arc sine of negative 1 half, you should be asking yourself the sine of what angle is equal to negative 1 half. We can find the reference angle by ignoring the negative sign. So the sine of what angle is equal to 1 half? We have memorized that the sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. So pi over 6 is the reference angle. In this case, we want sine to be negative. And sine is negative in these two quadrants because sine is the y value on the unit circle. Let's use the range restrictions of arc sine to narrow it down to a single answer. We have to stick to the first and fourth quadrant between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. So the answer is the angle that is in the fourth quadrant. We will not make the mistake of saying, well, uh, this is 6 pi over 6, and right here is 12 pi over 6, therefore this angle is 11 pi over 6. We now understand that 11 pi over 6 is wrong, because 11 pi over 6 means going all the way around like this and back. That is way too big. Arc sine is restricted to values between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. It cannot be any bigger than pi over 2. 11 pi over 6 is far bigger than pi over 2. We can stay inside the range of arc sine by rotating clockwise like this and calling the angle negative pi over 6. Number 6. To evaluate arc tangent of negative 1 over radical 3, you should be asking yourself the tangent of what equals negative 1 over radical 3. We can determine the reference angle by ignoring the negative sign and asking the tangent of what is 1 over radical 3. We have memorized that the tangent of pi over 6 is 1 over radical 3. So the reference angle is pi over 6. In this case, we want tangent to be negative. So we will restrict ourselves to quadrants 2 and 4, where the slope of the terminal side is negative. However, arc tangent can only be between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. That's the fourth quadrant and the first quadrant. So we can disregard the second quadrant. So the answer is going to be this angle, but again, be careful. We are not allowed to call this angle 11 pi over 6. Tangent is not allowed to be any bigger than pi over 2, and 11 pi over 6 is much bigger than that. Instead, we must rotate in the clockwise direction and call this angle negative pi over 6. New directions solve the following equations. Number 7, arc sine of x is equal to the arc cosine of 0. First, let's evaluate the arc cosine of 0 by asking ourselves the cosine of what angle is equal to 0. Cosine is the x value on the unit circle, and x values are equal to 0 here and here. However, arc cosine can only be on the top half of the unit circle. That means the arc cosine of 0 is only right here at pi over 2. To solve this equation, we need to get x by itself. We can cancel out the inverse sine by taking the sine of both sides of this equation. Since sine and arc sine are inverse functions, they cancel each other out and just give x on the left-hand side. 
x equals the sine of pi over 2. Pi over 2 is right here, and sine is the y value on the unit circle. At pi over 2, the y value is 1. So the answer is x equals 1. To solve number 8, we begin by evaluating the arc cosine of negative 1 half. And to do that, we ask ourselves the cosine of what angle is equal to negative 1 half. We can determine the reference angle by ignoring the negative sign and asking the cosine of what is equal to positive 1 half. We have memorized that the cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. So pi over 3 is the reference angle. In this case, we want cosine to be negative, and we know that cosine is negative in these two quadrants. However, arc cosine is only allowed to be in the top half of the unit circle. So the value of arc cosine must be the angle that is in the second quadrant. This is pi, and looking at the reference angle, we can think of it as 3 pi over 3. That means this angle is pi over 3 less than 3 pi over 3, which is 2 pi over 3. Now we have 2 arc sine of x is equal to 2 pi over 3. To isolate the arc sine, we will divide both sides of the equation by 2. When we divide 2 pi over 3 by 2, it's like putting a 2 right here. And uh, these 2's will cancel each other out. So on the next step, we will have the arc sine of x is equal to pi over 3. We can cancel out the arc sine by taking the sine of both sides of this equation. The sine of arc sine is just x. And uh, over here, I'm going to go ahead and write the sine of pi over 3. We have memorized that the sine of pi over 3 is radical 3 over 2. So that's the answer. x is equal to radical 3 over 2. Number 9. First, we evaluate the arc sine of negative radical 2 over 2 by asking ourselves the sine of what is equal to negative radical 2 over 2. We can determine the reference angle by ignoring the negative sign and asking the sine of what is radical 2 over 2. We know that the sine of pi over 4 is radical 2 over 2. So pi over 4 is the reference angle. In this case, we want sine to be negative, and sine is the y value on the unit circle, so sine will be negative in the third quadrant and in the fourth quadrant. However, arc sine is limited to the first and fourth quadrant between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. So the arc sine of negative radical 2 over 2 will be this angle in the fourth quadrant. Be careful, we cannot do what we normally do and go all the way around and back and call this 7 pi over 4. That's because uh, arc sine cannot be bigger than pi over 2. We cannot go past this mark. To stay within the restricted range, we need to rotate in the clockwise direction, making this angle negative pi over 4. We can isolate the pi x by taking the tangent of both sides of this equation. Tangent and arctangent cancel each other out, leaving pi x on the left side of the equation. Ignoring the negative sign, the tangent of pi over 4 is 1. Therefore, the tangent of negative pi over 4 will either be 1 or negative 1. We know that tangent is the slope of the terminal side. And here in the fourth quadrant, the terminal side has a negative slope. It's downhill. So the tangent of negative pi over 4 is negative 1. Dividing both sides by pi, we get x is equal to negative 1 over pi. And that's the answer. Number 10. First, we evaluate the arc cosine of negative 1 
by asking ourselves the cosine of what is negative 1. Cosine is the x value on the unit circle. And right here, the x value is positive 1. Uh, right here, the x value is 0. Right here, the x value is negative 1. And right here, the x value is again 0. We were looking for the angle where cosine is equal to negative 1, and that is the angle pi. Now the equation becomes 3 times the arc sine of x over 2 is equal to pi. Dividing both sides by 3, we get the arc sine of x over 2 is equal to pi over 3. I'm leaving a little space here, so we can take the sine of both sides of the equation. Sine and arc sine cancel each other out, leaving behind x over 2 on the left side of the equation. We have memorized that the sine of pi over 3 is radical 3 over 2. So x over 2 is equal to radical 3 over 2. We can isolate the x by multiplying both sides of the equation by 2. So these 2's cancel out, leaving x, and these 2's cancel out, leaving radical 3. So the answer is x equals radical 3. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, but also if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.